This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning, everyone. It's 6 a.m. Thursday, attached to a Friday, getting closer to that weekend. Normally, we'd be jumping up and down out of our, uh, our, our anchor seats here. But uh, boy, this is going to be a hot weekend that we're looking at here. Stella, you're ready for this. And to add on top of it, you got that pregnant belly and that just makes things more difficult. You were saying yesterday, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to be, to be out there in the heat, and Heather is tracking triple-digit temps where we live inland. So, no, to answer your question, I am not ready for this, and it doesn't actually seem real because if you step outside right now, you're like, boy, this is gorgeous. And just to think that, you know, in just a little bit, right. it's going to be really warm. So Heather will have our forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, we'll touch base with her in a moment see how hot it's going to get here. Meanwhile, San Diego State University pushing forward with plans to move all classes online just weeks into the new semester. This comes as cases of students with coronavirus quickly rising now. Now, News 8's Nana Ranpour is live at SDSU with a closer look at what's next here. And are these cases all on campus or are the majority of them off campus? Most of them are off a campus, around campus. In fact, there's an apartment uh, near campus that uh, houses students, and that's where one of the outbreaks occurred. But there are 64 confirmed and probable cases, according to the university, 15 of them right here on campus. And it's because of what's going on among their students that they are now going virtual. So starting today and for at least the next four weeks, students will be logging on to class instead of going into class. I think it's the right move. I think um, generally taking all the precautions necessary and maybe even overshooting it would be the nice move because it's people's safety and people's health that's at risk. And that was one of the students here at SDSU responding to this decision. They sent out that letter to let all students know that virtual courses begin today. And this is 10 days after the new semester just began. And it comes as cases of students with COVID-19 are rising quickly. According to school officials, the majority of the 64 student cases are from the off-campus community and 15 of them are on campus. The county did declare an outbreak at an off-campus apartment building, which houses SDSU students. Now, the campus reopened August 24th for classes. And again, as for the next four weeks, all classes will be online and then they'll determine what needs to happen after that. About 200 classes, mostly laboratory classes, were being taught in person here, and a lot of them were virtual. But still about 8,000 students, they say, were staying here on campus or taking those in-person courses. As part of the decision, SDSU Athletics will also be paused for the next two weeks. And some students say what they were seeing on campus showed that most people were following the COVID-19 precautions, but what people were posting on social media did not necessarily show social distancing. The county's epidemi epidemiology department is stressing now the critical need for students to change their behaviors. As they identify um, issues as they might be occurring and then we do immediate follow up. But this is not a simple cold or flu. You don't want to get it. And actually, as importantly, you don't want to pass it on. SDSU officials have hired private security who are now patrolling on and around campus to ensure that students are following the COVID-19 rules. Of course, they want people to maintain social distance, keep their masks on, but parties, uh, they say, not suggested, of course. They want students to stop doing that, stop gathering. Those are not essential, they say, but being a student is. As far as those who are staying here on campus in housing, they are encouraging those students to remain on campus to help avoid any community spread. They also have 130 additional rooms where students can isolate if they to test positive. So again, this is going to start now until the next four weeks, and then they're going to determine what the student case rate is before they make their next moves and consider bringing people back into the classroom. That's the latest live here on campus. We'll send it back to you. Netta, thank you. With many colleges well into their first or second week of classes, outbreaks are starting to show up. As we just saw with SDSU, Colorado College is switching to remote learning after multiple infections forced students to quarantine in their dorms. But online classes have had their issues as well, including in Miami-Dade, Florida, where students and teachers couldn't get online due to cyber attacks. Now there are concerns that Labor Day weekend will make things worse. When I say socially distanced, it means at all times, including with family members that you may not have seen for a few weeks. That was Dr. Deborah Burks talking about uh, when you're going home, when these kids go home, uh, college students who have been in those crowds 
without masks are advised to think twice before going back home for the holiday weekend. The number of new COVID cases in San Diego is staying relatively flat with no big changes in the past day here. So some good news to report. The county is reporting 250 new cases out of more than 7600 tests. It's a positive rate of 3.3% just under the 14 day rolling average of 3.8%. So good to see that number going down. There have been 18 community outbreaks over the past seven days. That is above the county's trigger of seven and seven new deaths, bringing that total to 695. The daily case rate remains in the red or second tier of the state's reopening plan. Stella. And UC San Diego Health is joining a second national cl clinical trial for a COVID-19 vaccine. This phase three trial of the vaccine is from AstraZeneca. The local portion of the study will recruit about 1600 participants and it will utilize a specially equipped bus to bring vaccine testing to local communities disproportionately affected by COVID-19. It starts next Tuesday in July. UC San Diego Health joined a clinical trial for the vaccine created by Moderna. And this also comes as the CDC is now urging governors to get ready for COVID-19 vaccinations to be distributed on November 1st. That's just two days before Election Day. A letter to the governors dated August 27 says the government is contracting with the company McKesson to distribute the vaccine to local doctors offices. The letter also asked them to speed up applications for distribution facilities requested by the company. San Diego Unified is sending out an SOS. The district is calling on federal lawmakers to provide additional funding as they deal with the challenges because of the pandemic. News 8's Chris Groh joins us live from San Diego High School with a look at what the district is demanding. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning, Stella, and they'll be joined by lawmakers from the Democratic side here in San Diego, also pushing for the HEROES Act to be passed. Now, that's in large part because they feel that there is obviously a lack of state revenue all up and down California, and therefore schools are going to be hurting. So let's break down a little bit more about that and then also what the HEROES Act plans to do for school districts across the country. Now, the reason why we're seeing this push from school leaders for the act is because the district and others need additional federal funding for what they call safety precautions, health reasons during the pandemic, and for resources to help curb learning loss that occurred during distance learning. Now, Democrats in the House passed the HEROES Act about 15 weeks ago. It's a second stimulus bill that totals to about $3.4 trillion. But the reason it never got to the Senate is because Republicans feel that it is too much spending. Now, they have their own stimulus bill that's about $1 trillion, but that hasn't passed either. Now, in the original CARES Act that was signed into law, schools across the country got about $30 billion, but educators said that wasn't enough, and they pushed for more in a second stimulus bill. Well, in the HEROES Act, there's $58 billion assigned to K-12 through education, and in the Republican version of that bill from the Senate, there's $70 billion earmarked for education. However, this is the key difference. Two thirds of that money is based on the extent to which schools are holding in-person classes. So both sides are split on not only how much money to spend here on education, K through 12 schools during this pandemic to make up for the loss of state revenue, but then also how much money should be going to the states and then how that money should be distributed. But in the meantime, educators across the country, not just here in California, are saying that neither amount is really enough to fully address the issue. Again, they are calling for this money because of the expected loss an already known loss here of state revenue, especially in the state of California. So we'll be hearing their push for lawmakers to go ahead and pass the HEROES Act coming up at 10 a.m. later today here at San Diego High School. Eric Stella. Chris, thanks for that. It is 610 time now for your morning rush. Work is now underway to solve that decades long problem in the South Bay. You know what we're talking about. Officials have announced new projects to clean up sewage flows from the Tijuana River. One project will focus on diverting more water from the Tijuana River for treatment. Another will capture more of the trash that otherwise flows into the ocean. Cross border sewage flows, as you know, have been a problem for years, causing frequent beach closures. The future of the current tailgate park in East Village will be the focus of a webinar this morning. One plan comes from Brookfield Properties. The other proposal is from the Padres development team. The group says it would include a East Village Square at the heart of the project. The webinar starts at 10 a.m. and we have a link to register at CBS8.com. Just click on the help button. And the USS Carl Vinson is now in its new home port at NAS North Island this morning. It was a long-awaited homecoming for the crew aboard the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. 
For the past 17 months, the carrier was dry docked for maintenance in Washington State. It was originally set to return August 1st, so welcome home to them. Stella? Well, we are just 60 days away from Election Day, and President Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden are stepping up their campaign efforts. The president will speak today at an airport in Pennsylvania after stopping in Wilmington, North Carolina, just yesterday to designate it a World War II heritage city. The commander-in-chief took an apparent swipe at his Democratic opponent, Joe Biden. Meanwhile, from Wilmington, Delaware, Joe Biden took a swipe at the president's coronavirus response and called the struggle to reopen schools a national emergency. He's 100% sharp. He's 100% sharp. I know a 78-year-old is not so sharp. But President Trump still doesn't have any real plan for how to open our schools safely. He's offering nothing but failure and delusions. And today, Biden plans to visit Kenosha, Wisconsin, where he will meet with the family of Jacob Blake, the man who was shot by a police officer in an incident that sparked demonstrations. Meanwhile, the Joe Biden campaign is accusing Russia of falsely attacking the former vice president's health. It comes after the Department of Homeland Security withheld publication of an intelligence bulletin back in July, warning law enforcement agencies of a Russian plot against Biden's campaign. Critics claim the bulletin was intentionally delayed to hurt Biden's bid for president, but Homeland Security says the the bulletin was delayed for two months because it was poorly written. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is on the defensive now after a video was leaked that shows her inside a San Francisco hair salon without a mask. By the way, those salons were closed too. So the House Speaker's district of San Francisco just, uh, uh, the House Speaker just recently excuse me, in San Francisco, they just recently allowed for salons to reopen, but for outdoor service only. So President Trump added to the criticism on Twitter. Meantime, Speaker Pelosi claims it was all a setup. They said, well, we're able to accommodate people one person at a time and that we can set up that time. I trusted that. I think that they owe, uh, that this salon owes me an apology for setting up. Mind you, the salons were closed, so she went to go get her hair done a day earlier. Democratic lawmakers have been harsh critics of the president's rallies where no masks or social distancing is in place. Still to come, a controversial inmate is now out of prison, and it's part of a COVID-19 prison reduction program. I'll tell you who that is. And it turned into a real estate deal gone wrong. How local leaders are doing damage control of an investment costing taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars. Plus this. We're seeing this and we're like, what's going on? What's going on? And it's in every store. Yeah, maybe you tried looking as well. Have you noticed Lysol and Clorox wipes still hard to find? What's going on? We'll let you know.